Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts 4 13. Once upon a time, this group of men were weak, ill informed, spiritually bankrupt individuals. So Jesus is with these disciples and he called them to follow him. The Bible says he called them to be with him and that he might send them. Fast forward to Acts chapter 4. Look what they had become. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Why? And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. This was the secret to their transformation. They were once unlearned men. They were once ignorant men. The people knew them. What created the transition? They had now become powerful men, bold, articulate, full of power, giving evidence to spiritual things. Acts chapter 4, now go to verse 33. The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness, 33, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all because they had been with jesus knowledge came because they had been with jesus boldness came because they had been with jesus grace came they had been with jesus great power there is an implication to being with jesus when he says follow me something happens to you as you follow you see when god calls a man he does not give you an assignment yet when he calls you he calls you to himself then he makes you then he sends you to the nations let me take that again when god calls a man don't think assignment yet think transformation many people come to jesus and they do not allow themselves to become they are conscious of the assignment and so they live ill prepared and they stand before pharaoh without encountering the burning bush when god calls a man he does not call you to an assignment he calls you to himself come follow me come follow me i'm sending you to the nations but the first part of call is to follow me many have come to jesus but they are not looking on to jesus they are looking on to their mission they are looking on to their assignment and you would think because it's a spiritual thing it means that's the pattern the pattern has always been to follow him he makes you anoints you then sends you you come to jesus he makes you he anoints you then he sends you you don't come to jesus to receive a mandate and then run away most believers make this mistake they do not know that they need to stay to become so they are mandate conscious not presence conscious they want an assignment they want an anointing they don't need jesus for transformation they just need him to attest upon their lives their ministries no wonder we stand before the nations and there is no evidence of knowing him the bible says because they had been with jesus not because they received a mandate they marveled because they had been with jesus are we learning jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 there is an exact defined spiritual pathway that leads to maturity and stature in the spirit please lend me your attention something is about to change in your life now i want to show you an ancient path the path that those who serve god's purposes effectively followed when it has to do with being made in the spirit you are not given the liberty to invent your strategy there is a predefined strategy your assignment is to be led through that path by the spirit and if and when you allow yourself to be led through that path, the end of it is glory. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Please look at me. In every generation, there seem to be certain individuals, not many, individuals who carry unusual dimensions of the anointing unusual investments of the spirit of revelation just functioning in unusual dimensions i can tell you this that disparity is not necessarily god's predeterminate counsel it is because most believers have not been mentored to understand the pathway that leads to authentic power the pathway that leads to grace 
we have a lot of colleges in Canada, I believe, and I'll always give this example. Say, for instance, if we have a gentleman here who intends to become a doctor, talk to me, intelligent people. What is your recommendation to this gentleman on his journey or ambition to becoming a doctor? He cannot freelance knowledge and become a doctor. He cannot select what he wants. There is an exact body of knowledge that translates that individual to be called a doctor. Am I right on that? So you can see a once naive, confused individual with only an ambition to be a doctor. Fast forward 10, 20 years, that same gentleman can be called a professor of surgery, medicine, even a consultant. What changed? Not his size, not his voice. He passed through a methodical system that has been accredited. You see why believers do not change? Why believers do not evolve? Because we largely freelance our understanding about God and we are not guided. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Just because you have truth does not mean it will bless you. No. You can have the ingredients to prepare a meal and still not get it right. It takes skill. You need to know the combination. Are we together? So many believers want to grow. Many believers want to access genuine apostolic power. Many believers want to experience the favor of God. Many believers want their lives to count. But for the most part, we have not learned that there is a pattern. There is a pathway in the spirit. By the way, I should tell you that God is a God of patterns. Please say that after me. God is a God of patterns. One more time. God is a God of patterns. When Moses was building the tabernacle in the wilderness, God began to give him specific instructions to ensure that the tabernacle were built according to the pattern showed him. Hallelujah. And the glory of God would not show up until Moses insisted and built according to the pattern. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. I know you have been blessed powerfully by this message. I know you have been blessed and I also want you to bless others by sharing this message with others also. In that way, you are also doing the work of an evangelist. So God bless you and we hope that we see you next time.